So Cliff, Atlantis, what are your thoughts? I thought this film was really something special. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed, might not be the right word, but I, I did, I thoroughly enjoyed the experience of watching it. Um, I mean, right from the beginning, the opening shot, just aesthetically, this kind of heat image of this horrible, of this terrible thing happening and, you know, burying, <laughs> burying someone. Um, <clears throat> but it just looked, you know, amazing. And everything looked amazing in this film, just the way it was shot. You know, it was in a um, desolate kind of post-apocalyptic, mm. you know, environment, which was just savagely, you know, kind of ruined that, but, but, you know, so many of the shots were just poetry, were just beautiful to look at. And I really, really appreciate that. I think, you know, the, the, the shots of the blast furnace, the, the shots of the kind of molten waste with all the, you know, this very gray picture, then this molten waste, which, which when it cools turns into, you know, not a, ugly waste but you know it just looked amazing and you know there's a shot of three doors um which are kind of fading green and that's they're just really compelling images i just you know so i thought i thought all the way through the film it just looked amazing and given that kind of <sighs> conflict almost between you know, feeling uncomfortable about what a terrible environment this was to to, to be living in, um, but with such beautiful poetry, you know, even in such a horrible place. So for me, the film was a great success at at that level as a as a work of art. Uh, I really enjoyed it. You know, and it's made particularly striking by the fact that it doesn't pull its punches in terms of, you know, how shocking it is. The suicide, I was genuinely shocked at that moment. Um, and when he, when he kind of burns himself with the iron, I mean, I just found that so shocking and kind of upsetting to watch, you know, so it's not like it just made it all look beautiful and, and, um, you know, kind of made everything look all right. The, the trauma underlying all of this, both in terms of the mental trauma of the guys, you know, the former soldiers, and the trauma to the landscape, you know, the trauma runs through this film, you know, right at the surface. And, you know, I just thought that was, that's what makes the film so successful for me, that it kind of has that conflicted feelings of kind of this looks amazing but this is so traumatic and these are such traumatized people um <clears throat> there were things i just loved about this film which you know were really odd to say that you would love this when they were examining the exhumed bodies i just thought those scenes were amazing like the the dignity of the 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 doctors or the examiner, um, kind of describing every little detail, kind of extracting every bit of humanity, you know, that the shoelaces are done up, the, the soles are this colour, that, you know, every little detail that could be given was acknowledged. And I thought there was something really beautiful about that, really dignified and... You know, and I appreciated that the film allowed that, allowed space for that to happen. You know, it wasn't necessarily entertaining. You know, you, you, I mean, you could, you could find that scene quite boring because some of those scenes, one of them particularly goes on for a long time when the doctor's just, you know, describing the condition of these bodies. But I think the fact that, the film slows down so much there and there's so much space is part of what gives the dignity to 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 these to these people that have just been you know killed and buried 
that actually there is still some dignity to the end of their life. I thought there were other scenes as well where the film really went slowly, but it felt like it was really giving you time to, to, to breathe. You know, there's a scene where both of them are eating together and they don't really say very much. And you kind of, you know, you, you want them to start getting along with each other because you want, you want, you know, just at some level, you want him to start enjoying his life a bit. So, you know, but they don't really chat very much and they eat, they talk a little bit. Um, but I just, it was quite a long scene with very little happening. And I, I really like that. There's a lot of space in this film. Um, I was... <sighs> I mean, these are a bit random thoughts, but there's, you know, I thought it was really interesting that we'd had that long scene where they were examining several bodies and we were really seeing in detail, you know, these um, bodies decomposing and kind of decrepit. And, and, and then when he goes to visit what must have been his old family flat, I guess, or you know, in the comparison between the flat and the dead bodies, the, the, it's like the flat was decomposing, the whole block was decomposing. Um, you know, it really, I really felt the, because we, we'd spent so long with the, the, the careful analysis of the dead bodies, I, I really felt that that ca carried over into that scene. And I thought that was really clever, the way that worked. Um, it, you know, if it was deliberate, <laughs> I, but I just really felt that kind of comparison. If I was going to make one critique of this film, and I, I really wouldn't want to criticise it, but the scene where they have the announcement about the job losses, about the, the, the place, the factory closing, I thought that was quite heavy handed and very, very different than the rest of the film. The film had a beautiful subtlety to it. You know, it, it didn't it didn't pull its punches but it, it was subtle all the way through. And that felt different. That felt very heavy handed. You know, we could have known that the factory was closing without that kind of scene of this big screen. It's, it's almost, you know, comical, which just for me doesn't fit with the, the, the film. Um, I, was, I thought the scene at the end where they make love in the van, just astonishing, because it 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 took me a little while to to actually register that there were dead bodies. They were surrounded by dead bodies, and you know I think they'd been kind of fooling around in the back of the van for a, for a minute or two before I thought, oh my god, they're actually surrounded by dead bodies there. And there was just something so beautiful about that scene. There was a purity in it that just was really fitting. It's like, for me, that was a really fitting climax that we'd been shown this poetry in this awful place and that they were able to connect with that, you know, really, <sighs> that communion almost, you know, but surrounded by dead bodies and, you know, I think that it's kind of a happy ending that, you know, he from this traumatic PTSD place, he finds relief and he finds purpose. Um, but, you know, it's not lived happily ever after ending. And I just think it's really, really subtle, really well done. You know, I think there's probably it made me think I... I haven't seen, I recently watched the first Rambo film, First Blood, um, you know, and of course a very different film, but a film about war vets and the difficulties of, you know, living after you've been in extreme situations and PTSD. And then obviously Born on the 4th of July was the other one that just came to mind. You know, these are important films on informing us because it's so easy to be nationalistic and patriotic about wars and winning wars and, you know, I think these films are really important. And I think that this was so, so, so good because, you know, it wasn't, it was very different than those kind of Hollywood attempts to 
to cover the cover the issue. It did it in a in a in a beautiful poetic way that is a work of art, but you know leaves you in no doubt what issues it's highlighting. I, I thought it was extraordinary. Oh. I, uh, the things you liked about it, I liked as well. And I, I kind of wanted it to be the film you've just described, but ultimately <laughs> it didn't work for me quite as well as it did for you. I think um, it opens with that, with that fairly boisterous scene. And I was quite pleased to find that the film, you know, with the, the guys doing the target practice and swearing mm. at each other and being quite aggressive and- yeah. But it, that's not the film it ends up being. You're right. It's much quieter and ultimately more tender than that. And, and I think the better and more interesting film for it. The, the, my ambivalence towards the film, I think, comes from, comes from its structure, which on the one hand I quite like, but which I felt was in the end kind of self-defeating. The film is structured in a very attractively simple way. And I think on some level appropriately so, it's mostly long shots with a mostly static camera, though there are some really interesting tracks. The, the, the most, the most uh, attractive one is that scene you described in the building he revisits, which is obviously his childhood home, which, and we track him through the whole building, which is a really remarkable set piece. And in fact, each of the sequences is very skillfully done, very neatly choreographed. And there is something really attractive in the precision of the way those scenes unfold. Like for example, there is that, that scene where a, there's a huge digger tire in the foreground and a, and a digger comes along and very skillfully uses the bucket to flip the tire, catch it in the bucket. And then the men stand on the bucket and the digger drives off. Yeah. And then later, there's a beautiful sequence with, uh, again, a, a digger's bucket in the in the foreground, and he comes along with this long hose, fills it with water, throws these sticks underneath it, and lights a fire. And then we gradually realise he's building himself a bath, and he gets in, and and so these scenes are really compelling in and of themselves, mm -hmm. and they are they are kind of isolated and apparently for sometimes sort of abstracted from the narrative. And I started to think maybe he's talking about the disjointed, dislocated nature of the characters he's describing. He creates this kind of cold, unemotional, and yet strangely poetic landscape. And yet, and yet it's like there is a, ultimately a lack of faith in in that setup and that the director wants at the same time to create an emotional arc through using this sort of detached abstracted grammar and so he starts this relationship between the guy and the woman which I found unconvincing and it's unconvincing because the language the film uses to describe it precludes it so ultimately the attempt felt kind of confused and self-defeating and and I think this was no clearer in, than in the, I don't know if it's the final scene, the penultimate scene, the sex scene, which you found very affecting. I found embarrassing. I found it just went on so long, needlessly long, and, that, and it didn't feel cathartic in any way to me. And it was like the director wanted it to be cathartic in a gentle way, but he was still using the tools he'd used throughout the whole film to create a very detached distract, you know, a distanced, unemotional feel to the film. And so it felt completely cold and mechanical. And then the fact that it just went on and on and on felt kind of silly and, and <laughs> as I say, embarrassing. And it didn't work for me at all. I felt, felt completely flat. And that was a real shame because if it was just a sequence of ultimately disjointed set pieces, I think it was very, for the most part, very successful. Occasionally it was quite schematic and I worried that it would continue to be so. And that was in the, the two scenes that ended with that surprising act of violence. There was something almost, there's almost a structural cliche in there that you, you compose a scene of very mundane domestic routine that goes on for longer than it has to and then culminates in a surprising act of violence on the one hand the guy is welding and then he jumps into the thing and then the other one the guy is ironing his trousers and then he burns himself with the iron 
Now, these are surprising and effective sequences, but because there are two of them and structurally they're identical, I began to worry that the film was going to feel schematic. It, ultimately, it doesn't. But I think the, the thing that it just didn't, it finally didn't cohere for me. And I think the heart of it is this, is this contradiction within the film, which I don't think is intentionally ambiguous. I think it's just actually a, a failure on the filmmaker's part. This idea that he wants to both have a cold and detached narrative and to use the film's grammar in such a way to reinforce this and also have a cathartic emotional arc but try and portray that arc through the language, which makes it impossible. And um, so ultimately I found it kind of confused. There was, there was, however, a lot to like about it. It has fantastic use of locations, as you know, you described uh, really attractive scenes of the blast furnaces, as you said, and amazing shots of what I guess are like gas works, people standing on roofs with these peculiarly desolate apocalyptic landscapes. And I loved its treatment of a kind of speculative history that's part an extension of the real Russian-Ukrainian war, part a kind of alternate dystopian version of it. And you're never given much in terms of coordinates about what happened when. Of course, we're told it's set 2025, a year after the war, it says. But we don't know if it's postulating that the war in Ukraine escalates and do you know what I mean? So you, you don't yeah. you don't know where you are in terms of real life, as it were. And I like that. Um, and also, I, I too was really taken by some of the scenes, particularly as you described the sequence where it forensically describes what people are wearing. You know, there's a real simple poetry in those sequences, which really matches the film's style. I ultimately found it it would have done better to just drop his emotional arc, if it were instead just a series of isolated sequences of his life and that it didn't try and build into it a more conventional, um, you know, psychological trajectory for that character. because I didn't think the film needed it and it didn't work for me. I felt, as I say, no catharsis there at all. Um, so a really striking and interesting film, but it, it didn't, didn't quite work for me. That's so interesting. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking of what was that Russian film? Was it Loveless? Yes. Loveless. The, <clears throat> you know, because what I'm hearing you say is that, you know, you wanted it to be like, because Loveless, I found, was just relentlessly miserable and had no relief, had no kind of emotional arc. It just stayed in the you know, the, 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 there's differences between those films, but you can see some similarities in terms of, you know, where it was shot and the environment. And um, it, <clears throat> it feels like this film really wanted to be different than that. It wanted not to just leave you in the misery. It wanted to take you on that emotional journey. But it feels to me like it is really deliberate and really skillfully done to do it in a way which doesn't just make it a happy ending. It's not an unambiguously happy ending. Ending. It leaves you with the contradiction of kind of this trauma decomposing dead society and people um, and industry with this you know, beauty with this poetry and with this communion between these two people, these people that find some comfort in each other. I think it, for me, it was very skillfully managed to not make it um, sentimental or, you know, to overdo it, to make it a happy ending. It, it, it wasn't a happy ending, but I like the fact that there was something positive. There was I mean, clearly that was a terrible job. You know, the sm I thought that scene where they clearly it smells awful. This one body smells terrible. You know, it really, they really communicated that well. Um, and, you know, this is an awful job. And when he asks her how she can do it, you know, she's really positive. She finds a real purpose in it of giving these people a kind of dignified, final chapter to their lives and maybe giving the families some something um you know that this this is a very positive film you know for me 
I like that. I like trying to find something positive without being sentimental or, or, you know, just finding a happy ending just to leave you satisfied. I, I, I really enjoy that. I thought that was really skillful compared to say a film like Loveless and, you know, Loveless is not the one that just came to mind. There's many other films like that that just leave you in the misery. And so, yeah, that's a really, we, we really reacted differently to that. I guess it, you know, it swept me up emotionally so that I did feel that that was a, there was something beautiful about that final scene. It probably does go on too long. I can, yeah, it, it maybe didn't need to go on that long. And yeah, I forgot to mention the, um, where they're doing the shooting and they end up fighting with each other. But, you know, I do think that that was quite important. Those, those three set pieces of the iron, the, you know, him jumping off the thing, off, it, jumping into the molten iron and the, and the fight. I think those three things maybe are a little bit formulaic almost, but they, they clearly establish what's beneath the surface here. They leave you in no doubt that this is a, you know, these people are completely traumatized and, and at absolute boiling point, you know, cannot, one criticism from the boss is enough to want to, you know, for you to want to kill yourself, you know, kind of feeling, having strong feelings and you want to smash the iron up and hurt yourself with it. You know, being that much, you know, they're having fun shooting and then the next thing they're shooting each other. You know, I think that that does serve a purpose for for showing how, how I guess that could have been in light of everything else in the film. Maybe that was a little bit heavy handed. But, you know, I, I like the fact that that told me a lot and then it kind of showed me something else. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I think going back to my original point, I think theoretically I agree with you that the film is uh, trying to trying to portray the the sort of broken nature of this man and yet instate this kind of tender ending. But I, I, I think the difference is I didn't feel any emotional connection to him and that was okay. It's not that I wanted the film to be sort of relentlessly uh, bleak. It's just that I think if you are going to, it felt equivocal, like it wanted to both have an emotional payoff, but it didn't want to paint that emotional payoff with, through a language which would ena enable it to be emotional. You know, I just felt no emotional connection to it. And that would have been fine if, if that's what it was trying to do. But because it was like presenting that final sex scene in, in a sense, like this is an emotional connection. And yet I felt none. The, dis the disjunct was so complete that it just felt kind of redundant and silly that it just went on as long as it did but I guess that's the difference that you know it's just we you you connected with it emotionally and ultimately I didn't which needn't have been a problem if, if I didn't feel like the director wanted me to yeah yeah oh well I'd highly recommend this film well I, I would recommend it as well I think it's definitely well worth a watch and certainly a very interesting film yeah good what's next then what's next is uh I was at home but filmed by Angela Shanelak Germany. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Yeah.